Hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Our goal today, we're going to be looking at advanced cell cycle regulation and differentiation. So we're going to really dive in to how, um, specifically how the cell cycle is regulated, and we're also going to look at how cells differentiate. That is, how do a small ball of cells that are developing to becoming an organism differentiate and become different cells like skin cells or muscle cells or nerve cells because they all are very different from one another. They all have different functions. And so it's essential for us to understand how they become that way and have those different functions. Specifically, our goals today are to be able to understand how the cell cycle is regulated. The cell cycle is very important to the body and to the cell. And if it's not regulated properly, that can lead to a whole host of problems inside of the cell. And we also need to be able to evaluate the importance of special proteins and enzymes in the cell cycle that push forward this process of cellular reproduction. So one thing that's really important to understand is that an organism that's made up of many cells needs to coordinate cell division very, very precisely. Uh, different cells grow at different rates. And it's really important to coordinate when these cells divide and the rate at which these cells divide. Some cells divide faster than others and that's necessary because the cells need to be replaced faster. Like skin cells, for example. They're exposed to the environment so they get injured and die all the time. They need to be constantly replaced at a very rapid rate. But other cells, like internal organs, like liver cells, don't need to be replaced quite as quickly because they don't die as often. So let's talk a little bit about the frequency of cell division and just a couple of cell types to help give you an idea of there's a wide range of different rates at which cells perform the cell cycle in mitosis. And skin cells divide roughly about every 12 to 24 hours depending upon the location of the skin cells. Liver cells only divide once every year or two. They're very, very unique cells and they don't... Uh, they just simply don't die as frequently, so you see them dividing less frequently. They don't need to replace cells that die because their cells don't die very often. And lastly, uh, mature nerve cells and muscle cells actually don't divide at all after maturity, which is very interesting. They're permanently arrested in what's called a G0 phase. And this phase, they, they really don't grow, they don't develop, they just kind of perform their normal functions. So they don't really get into the mitosis phase at all because they don't divide after maturity. Now one of the things that we're looking at to the future is how do we get these cells to divide, especially nerve cells for people who have permanent nerve damage and spinal cord injuries. If we can get those cells to start dividing and developing again, we might be able to solve some of those problems related to nerve damage. So in the process of cell cycle regulation, there are two irreversible points in the cell cycle. Once they've gone past these checkpoints, mitosis is going to happen. Uh, we cannot go back to where we were when we started. Those two irreversible points are, and it kind of makes sense, the replication of DNA. So after you replicate your DNA, you just can't simply stop the process of the cell cycle because then you have twice as much DNA that's necessary inside of the cell. Replication of the cell must continue. Additionally, the other irreversible point is separation of the sister chromatids and metaphase. When those sister chromatids pull apart, the process must continue completely until we have two new cells. These checkpoints that we talk about are controlled by basically stop and go chemical signals. And the signals indicate that the cell cycle steps have been completed correctly. If they have been completed correctly, chemicals are going to tell the cell to go. You can continue through the cell cycle. If not, it's going to say stop, and then a whole host of things can happen, whether it just stops completely. Um, the cell performs a process called apoptosis, which is where the cell actually programs itself to die in order to prevent genetic disorders and other cellular problems related to the malfunctioning of the cell cycle from occurring. So the cell can actually control itself and kill itself if it thinks it's going to harm the cell. And that's something that's really, really important because otherwise cancer and, and other things would be much more prevalent if these checkpoints were not put in place. Some of the major checkpoints that exist, uh, the first ones between G1 and S, 
Basically, are we ready for DNA replication to begin? Is the cell large enough to be able to produce two new cells from it? Are we ready to go through this process of the cell cycle? The next checkpoint is between G2 and mitosis, and that basically checks to make sure that the DNA replication has been completed correctly. Do we have uh, you know, the exact number of DNA segments that we need? Are the chromosomes produced properly? That sort of thing. And lastly, the spindle checkpoint, and that's if all of the chromosomes are attached to the spindle. If you think about it, if it's not, that's going to pull an extra chromosome to one side. One cell will have an extra chromosome. The other one's going to lose one. Can the sister chromatids separate correctly? Are the spindle fibers attached properly? These are checkpoints to ensure that the daughter cells of mitosis are going to be genetically identical. And that is the whole purpose of these checkpoints. So what controls these checkpoints? A couple of different chemicals. Um, one is called cyclin and one is called CDK. And what happens is that when these two chemicals combine, this produces passage through several different stages of the cell cycle. So these two chemicals are really, really important for those checkpoints. And if they're combined correctly, then they're going to continue on through the different stages of the cell cycle. So we have cyclins, CDKs, which stands for cyclin dependent kinase, and when they combine together to form the CDK cyclin complex, that allows the cell cycle to continue. Some other factors that affect the process of mitosis, one is called density dependent inhibition. And it makes sense, right? Crowded cells are going to stop dividing. If there are cells that are too close to each other or they're really tightly compacted, they're not going to continue to divide. That ends up becoming a serious problem. So if the cells are too close together, they're really tightly compacted, they're simply going to stop dividing. Um, that's called density in, that's called density dependent inhibition. The other one's what's called anchorage dependence, and that's in order to divide, certain cells must be attached to another cell for them to divide. And that makes sense because, you know, if you have cells inside of your body that for some reason aren't properly attached to where they need to be and they start dividing, you could have masses of unnecessary cells in locations inside your body where you don't want them. So density dependent inhibition and anchorage dependence are essential for proper cellular, for proper cell cycle regulation. Now, these growth factors can be problematic as well, and if they're not handled properly, they can cause cancer. One of these is what's called a proto-oncogene. The root onco actually refers to cancer. You've probably heard of oncology before. These normally activate cell division, just another uh, protein that can um, activate cell division that starts this process of cell division. Now, when this part of, uh, when this gene the segment of DNA isn't regulated properly, the cells can actually continue to divide unchecked. And that's when we start getting cancer because the cells are dividing much faster than normal, they aren't proceeding through the checkpoints properly, and as a result you get cells that may not necessarily be genetically identical. And that becomes a problem because those can mass into tumors and start causing cancer. Additionally, there are also tumor suppressor genes that inhibit cell division from happening. If it's switched off, that can cause cancer as well. So you have different genes that are either activated or inactivated, and if they're activated or inactivated incorrectly, that can cause cancer. One example of a tumor suppressor gene is p53, and recent studies have shown that almost 50% of cancers are a result of a malfunction in the p53 gene. Differentiation is an essential process. All human cells contain the same DNA, but during development, different genes get turned on, which results in different proteins being made and different cells being produced. This process is actually called histogenesis. Genesis meaning to start. So we start off with, as a bunch of cells, and we've already talked a little bit about stem cells. Well, in these stem cells, different genes get activated, and that determines what type of cell that's going to become. So you see on the right here, you have a list of different cells that, that one stem cell can become based upon either the activated or inactivated genes that are present inside of the cell. In the process of embryonic development, we see that there are four, 
this forms three specific types of cells, and these cells are known as germ layers. There's the endoderm, which is a specific type of cell that stem cells will differentiate into. And this eventually is going to differentiate into respiratory and gastrointestinal tracts. Mesoderm, which becomes the muscular system and urinary system, among other things. And ectoderm, which refers to nervous system and skin. So we have three different layers that are going to become different parts of the body. And you look at the roots, endo refers to inside. Makes sense when you consider that it helps build and uh, develop into the respiratory and gastrointestinal tract. Mesoderm, the middle tissue. Meso means middle. So we refer to the muscular and urinary system, things that are kind of in the middle of the body. And then ectoderm is outside, and that's where we get nervous system and skin. Additionally, one thing to understand is that once cells differentiate, they cannot change back. So once you have a cell that's differentiated into a skin cell, it is not going to be able to change into a nerve cell, per se. Now, one thing that's interesting about differentiation is that certain organisms can actually develop and differentiate cells after the loss of tissue, something that humans and most mammals cannot do. This is called epimorphosis. So an example of this is when lizards actually can differentiate after maturity to generate new limbs. You've probably seen, you know, lizards, when they lose their tail, they can regenerate and grow a new one. The picture on the right here actually showcases that process happening. That process is called epimorphosis. So hopefully you understand a little bit more about how the cell cycle is regulated. You understand a little bit more about the specifics of how cancer can be caused if the cell cycle is not regulated properly, and also a little bit about differentiation. Hopefully this is a good lesson. Hopefully you learn a little bit more about cellular processes. We'll come back and talk to you next time. Have a great day, guys. See you later.